During the era of RuneScape Classic, runes were quite hard to come by. Shops sold limited amounts and getting drops from monsters wasn't very easy, meaning training magic was a whole different ballgame compared to today. So it's easy to understand how groundbreaking runecrafting was when this guild was released on the 29th of March 2004, under the name RuneCraft. But Jagex did not intend to make runes too common. Training it required you to get the essence and walk all the way from the bank to the rune altar, and the higher level rune you crafted, the longer the distance would be. This made high level runecrafting restricted to the people who could be bothered to go through the work, something that was rather few in a time when the average player was probably like 11 years old. Not to mention this skill was released together with a different tiny update, being the entirety of RuneScape 2. <laughs> But the players who did pull through despite the tedious effort made serious money. Larrier was the second player to achieve 99 runecrafting, just behind Kale Still on the 15th of September 2004, but she was the only one to keep going after hitting the final level, making her one of few to create double nature runes and thus supplying the market with them. The money to be made from this was above anything else, and Larrier was smart about it, paying other players to run back and forth to the bank for her, letting her stand at the altar and constantly craft runes for XP and money while the essence was brought in for her. And it worked like a charm. One paid runner became two, two became four, four to eight, and over a short period of time, Larrier had quickly become famous for her runecrafting business and what would become a popular money-making method for the average player. Tons of low-level players, titled collectors, would queue up outside the runecrafting altar with rune essence for Larrier. A different player, employed as security, would tell them when they could enter, all to avoid scammers and piling up, making the business run slower. But trade fast. If you're too slow, Larrier would throw you off the team. Recruiters would run around in the world getting new runners onto the team, with a promise of money for anyone who signed up. They'd be sent to a trainer, who would tell them how the business worked and teach them the art of running, which would be their first role in the business. The nature runes Larrier crafted would then be handed to one of the few CEOs, Larrier's personal circle of friends, the players who were paid in party hats due to the money they raked in, who would go on to sell the nature runes in World 2 Varok or Falador, and then proceed to pay out the money to all the employed players under them in the hierarchy. Larrier made herself untouchable by adding an exclusivity rule to her business. If you ran for her, you couldn't run for anyone else. Even if other runecrafters could afford one or two runners, they'd never be able to match Larrier's personal juggernaut. Her XP rates would rocket past competitors, getting up to 250,000 XP a day in a time where 70k XP a day was considered a valid effort. The business ran for quite some time, until Larrier eventually quit in late 2006 to pursue new adventures in a different game, ending with 157 million runecrafting XP, five times that of second place. The last recorded high score image we have is slightly less though, as you can see here. Larrier would throw in the high scores for another three years without gaining a single XP, until finally in late 2009 when the player Phoenix Odin passed her to become the first player to achieve 200 million XP. Larrier's legacy was in April 2011 reflected in-game, when Mod Ash added the NPC Larrier to the Runecrafting Guild, replacing Aubrey as the one to sell the Runecrafting Cape to any player who followed the path Larrier once took.